Good afternoon. Uh, I was thinking uh, recently about uh, Jesus Christ <clears throat> in reference to his high, high priestly prayer. Let me just read a few verses that come out of John 17 that I think are really filled with meaning. In uh, John 17, verse 3, Jesus said, <clears throat> This is eternal life that they may know you the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you gave me to do. And now, O Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. <clears throat> A couple of thoughts come out of this. First, Jesus seems to speak of two kinds of glory. A glory which he had before he became human, that is, before his incarnation, as the second person of the Godhead. He was God. He had glory in his invisible form in heaven. Then he came to the earth uh, to be born of the Virgin Mary, the incarnation, and he achieved another level of glory, this time as a man. Now, this is really important to us uh, because if there's no man in heaven, there is not going to be any other men or mankind in heaven. Christ earned a place in heaven by glorifying the Father. And how did he do that? He said, I've not come to do my own will, but the will of my Father who sent me. He glorified mankind as he glorified himself by obeying the Father 100%. He never sinned. He never had a sinful thought. He never said anything sinful. He never did anything sinful. His heart was pure holiness as a man, and that glorified God. So the fact that any of us have any hope of being in heaven is based on the fact that there's a man who earned the right to go into heaven. That's Jesus Christ, and he's making reference to that in this portion. So our hearts should give thanks that there's somebody who earned the right to be in heaven. And indeed, that is the Lord Jesus Christ. But the portion I'd like to focus on here, I think has a tremendous uh, impact on us if we think about it. He said, Father, I have finished the work which you gave me to do. Now this is a liberating thought. This brings freedom to the soul, to the conscience. Let's ask a question. Did Jesus heal everybody he ever saw that was sick and needed healing? I don't think so. Uh, did he preach the gospel uh, to every person that was in Israel where he ministered? Mm -mm, he didn't. Did he uh, go to all the homes he possibly could uh, to meet with people and encourage them? I don't think so. <clears throat> in fact, when you look at what Jesus did, it doesn't look really like he contacted that many people. Now, the movies make it sound like uh, he was everywhere and doing all things. But I think there was a limit, <clears throat> and Christ understood the limit. As perfect man, his job wasn't to be a hero. It wasn't to do everything that could possibly be done to glorify God the way man thinks of it. But what he did was to essentially say, Father, what do you want me to do? I will do the things you want me to do, but I will not involve myself with the things you haven't called me to do. He could say in absolute honesty, I have finished the work which you gave me to do. Now, sometimes our own souls become anxious. They become troubled. We feel guilty, we just haven't done enough, haven't talked to enough people about Jesus, haven't raised our kids right, we haven't uh, uh, been the sterling witness we should have been at work, and on and on it goes. And the enemy certainly uses that kind of thinking to discourage and defeat us. So how do we find freedom and liberty from that? By coming to Jesus, who said, Father, I finished the work which you gave me to do and say, Jesus, what do you want me to do? We're not called to do anything more than what he wants us to do. <clears throat> We're not called to do less, obviously, but here is our freedom, just to be in 
constant contact with him uh, through prayer, through submission, through obedience uh, to his callings upon our life. But it's important that we know what they are. How do we know what to do? Well, we may not know unless we ask. In fact, uh, we're taught from the scriptures, you have not because you ask not. We don't really know what our calling is, nor do we know what we should be doing necessarily, unless we ask. But it takes a tremendous burden off of us to realize that Christ has done everything necessary to provide a place of righteous relationship between a redeemed sinner and the Godhead. That's all done. He finished it. And that's the model for us, that we do what he asks us to do, but we don't need to be concerned with the things he hasn't asked us to do. But in order to know what he's asked us to do, we need to ask him. These are days where our conscience can really beat us up uh, in terms of have we done enough? Well, the enough is simply what Christ asks us to do. So what about you? <clears throat> Are you carrying loads of guilt that you haven't done enough uh, in the various areas of life? Have you been struggling? Well, what is it I'm supposed to do? Or perhaps you've asked questions about how do I deal with all these issues that I have to deal with? How do I carry this load? The answer to all those questions is obviously found in asking Jesus. Our place of safety, refuge, our place of liberty and freedom is found in Christ, who came to set us free. So, trust that you'll find a deepening relationship with Christ as you realize that he has given us an example, and he didn't try to do everything he could. But what he was called to do, he did well, 100% righteous. That's our entry to heaven, his good works. God bless you.